Hi, it's Jen, and this is Dream Prague, the channel where you get an American's perspective on what it's like to live in Prague, Czech Republic. I recently got a comment on this video, something along the lines of, when did you start hating America? Hating America? Oh, because I made fun of their attached shower heads and because they don't take their shoes off inside? Hmm, okay. Of course I don't hate the United States. There are many great things about my home country. But I do live in the country of the Czech Republic by choice, so I tend to see a lot of great things about this country as well. In fact, in this video I talked about some things that Americans could learn from Czech Republic regarding Czech manners and habits. Things that I think we could adopt from them. One of the things I mentioned was that Czechs greet each other with two air kisses, one on each cheek. And my Czech commenters were like, Soje, we don't do that. Some commenters said only the older generation does it, while other commenters said that this was something new within the last 10 years and probably came from France or Italy. Someone even suggested that Czech men were tricking me into kissing them. Some Czechs said they were just as confused as I was, whether or not they should kiss or hug or handshake, and I was really glad to hear that I wasn't alone. So that's just one example of how I'm having a very specific experience, and it might not be true for all Czechs, but you guys understand that. So to be equitable about my criticisms of the United States, I thought it was a good idea to make a video about what Americans do better than the Czechs. Maybe not a good idea, but perhaps interesting. Tak, uvidíme. For this topic, I thought I'd focus on what Americans do better than the Czechs in school environments and work environments. So first, a bit of my background. I went to university and graduate school in the United States, and I also worked in the United States in law firms, and I also owned a small business. In the Czech Republic, I've worked as a teacher and I've managed an immigration company that helped expats work and live in the Czech Republic. And I've also been a student. I got a master's degree in law at Charles University here in Prague. So I have a little bit of experience in both school and work in both countries. But again, this is just my perspective. So first, let's talk about schools. The first thing I feel that American teachers do better than Czechs is they encourage their students' involvement in the classroom. Even if the students give wrong answers, they're not shamed or looked down upon. Instead of the teachers simply feeding facts to the students, the students are encouraged to uh, ask questions and to give answers even if they're not sure that the answer is correct. When they speak up in class, that means that they are processing the information, not only memorizing facts. When I was teaching English to adult students here in Prague, I often found that they were hesitant to speak up because they were afraid of giving a wrong answer. Whereas I highly encouraged them to speak up even if their answer was wrong, because together we could work towards the right answer. Of course, in many subjects like medicine, science, and even law, there is a correct answer. But American teachers know that the process of getting to that right answer is what actually helps the student learn, rather than just memorizing what a teacher has told you. But I must add that my Czech teachers do not fit into this stereotype. They really do encourage us to give answers, even if we're wrong, and I never feel embarrassed. So this is not the case with every teacher. I think the newer generation of teachers is a lot more like the American style of teacher. Students in the United States are encouraged to challenge their teacher if they have a different opinion. For example, the Munich Agreement happened in 1938. And if a student said it happened in 1945, that's obviously wrong. But if the student says to the teacher, I think the Munich Agreement resulted in positive benefits for Czechoslovakia, 99% of historians would probably disagree with the student, but if the student can present the argument with convincing evidence, that student will be rewarded with a good grade in an American university. 
because in the American university system, they're trying to reward original thinking. From my experience, the Czech education system values authority over exploration. The teacher's job is to impart the wisdom and the student's job is to take in the wisdom without really questioning it. So why do I think the US's method is better? Because original thinkers become innovators and innovators help to solve society's problems in new, unexpected ways. Number three, the US system has majors. So in most colleges or universities in the United States, a student declares a major. That is an area of focus. But they usually don't have to declare the major until their third year of university. In the first two years of school, they are free to explore other areas, and in fact, they're required to. So I began university as a fine arts major, but I was still required to take three semesters of science, literature, logic, history. And by the time I got to the final two years of study, I realized I'd prefer to focus on history, and so I was able to change my major. My roommate in college changed her major from medicine to politics. Here in the Czech Republic, you choose your faculty from the beginning of your studies. So you would enroll in the law faculty right out of high school, or you'd enroll in the medical faculty. And I'm not certain, but I don't believe you are then required to take classes in a totally different field of study. I feel that the US system is better because it allows you to explore other topics and it's hard to know at the age of 17 what you want to be when you grow up. And the US system allows you to make a more educated decision. It creates a more well-rounded student with a little bit of knowledge in a lot of different areas. Written exams versus oral exams. In universities in the United States, each class in a semester usually requires a midterm exam, a 10 to 15 page paper, and a final exam. Now I'm speaking mostly about the humanities and the social sciences. And these exams take about three hours and you are writing the entire time, basically until your hand falls off. In Czechia, at Charles University, we had oral exams. And this was my first time doing anything like this, and it was horrifying. You go into a small room with two to three professors, and it's just you, and there are little slips of paper with a question on them, covering all the topics that you'd studied the entire semester in that class. You pick out a topic, and you have to prepare for about 60 seconds, and then you must present the answer, and be ready to answer questions. I found that studying for these exams was like cramming as many facts as I possibly could into my head, and then after my exam was over, I'd go to the bar, and with my first chug of beer, all of the facts just dissolved out of my brain. It just didn't seem to be an effective way to retain the information, which is the whole point. I found that writing papers that was common in the US system helped me retain the information because when I have to explain something in writing and do the research that that entails, I just tend to understand the subject more. And it's a lot less stressful. This might be just a personal feeling for me. I'm a better writer than a speaker. So some people might enjoy being on stage and being under pressure like that, but not me. One of my professors actually lit candles and incense in her, in her office where the exam was to try to make me feel less nervous and I just wanted to pass out. And you have to wear a suit to this exam. Um, in the US, it's actually quite normal to wear like your worst clothes for your final exams. So we would wear literal pajama pants and sweatshirts to our final exams almost as a badge of honor that we hadn't changed clothes in four days because we'd been studying so hard. It's the exact opposite here in Czechia. You wear a suit, a tie, and uh, you present it in a very dignified manner. Degrees don't matter as much in the US as they do in the Czech Republic. The Czechs place a lot of importance on academic degrees. 
in the United States, degrees are valued, but we have sort of a saying that um, a top university degree has a shelf life of five years. And that means if you go to Harvard and you have this beautiful Harvard degree, that's wonderful and it will get you in a lot of doors. But if you don't use it to greatly improve your situation in five years, then it's not worth as much as you think it is. In the US system, I feel that we value um, the work experience more than the degree that you have. So if you can prove that you are a very intelligent person that went to Harvard because you did these great things in the workplace, then that's better than simply having a degree. Now, of course, you need a degree um, in certain fields like law and medicine, um, fields where that degree is required. But for example, a, a MBA, a business degree, is highly valued because you will make contacts at that school that you will then have in the business world. But you're not necessarily a better candidate with an MBA degree than someone with five years of excellent work experience. I think that the Czech obsession with having a degree goes hand in hand with their respect for authority. It's something that was granted from on high saying that they are good at something and they have a minimum level of knowledge in that area. Whereas in the United States, if you're a worker that can think outside the box and improve your company or your firm um, in, in, in new ways, that is more valuable to US company. Especially on the West Coast, best coast, um, degrees matter less than on the East Coast. The East Coast, New York, Washington DC, so finance and politics, um, the degree is more important, but on the West Coast, which is tech and entertainment, obviously, it doesn't matter. The work experience is a lot more important than the degree you have. And you can just look at Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg. Um, neither of them graduated from, from university and they're doing just fine. So we tend to value um, what you actually do in the workplace rather than what school you got into when you were 17 or 18. So in my opinion, the US system is better because a degree is just a tool that helps you get your foot in the door. But what you do when you're in the door matters more. US employees are better at self-promotion. American workers are a lot more confident promoting their skills. When I taught business English to Czech professionals here in Prague, I would have them do a fake um, CV as an exercise. I would have them list their soft skills at the bottom, so um, good leadership, things like that. And they had a really hard time listing things that they do well. They were happy to put an educational degree, but they didn't feel comfortable promoting themselves on their own CV. For example, one might say, I implemented a system that saved our company um, five million crowns or I was the top salesperson in my company in quarters one and two. Um, I think that the Czech people think this is what we say, tooting your own horn or bragging or boasting and it's putting yourself on a pedestal and that's an opportunity for people to criticize you. I think Americans promote themselves better because we realize that no one is going to promote us for us. If we waited for our colleagues to speak out loud about how good we were or our bosses to praise us, then we'd be waiting forever. And if you want a promotion or you want a raise or you want a new job, you need to be able to toot your own horn. You need to be able to say positive things about yourself. Of course, everyone knows someone who speaks too highly of themselves. So the key here is to be realistic when you're listing your accomplishments. Americans are better at problem solving. This is only my personal experience, but Czechs that I've worked with or interacted with in certain government offices are not great at solving the problem. 
but they like to tell you why you can't do something. For example, let's say there's step A and step B and step C. The check would say, you must go through all the steps. This is how we always do it. You are no exception. The American would say, hmm, I don't think we need to do B. Let's skip to C. Let's do it. And everybody does it. And if it works, that's great. We have a new system. It's also true, and Czechs will admit this, that Czechs like to complain a lot. It's like a national pastime, I've heard it said. Um, and they like to complain about the situation in an office or in a certain establishment, but they don't take active steps to change the problem. Too many people must be consulted. We need too many manager signatures. And I think Czechs are hesitant to take the responsibility of saying, I've decided this system needs to change, I will change it. They don't want to be the one to blame. Whereas in the American system, if you take initiative and you change a system to make it better, that's great. You get credit for that. If you changed it and it didn't turn out well, that's okay. We can change it again and try something new. There's no shame in being wrong just like in school. So I think the US system is better here because when you are able to move quickly, you are able to be flexible, you can address problems, think outside the box, all of that is better for business. Americans have a can-do attitude. I made fun of Americans' can-do attitude in this video right here, but it's really a good thing, in my opinion. Americans will have a goal, and then the next step is to think, how do I get to that goal? There must be a way and I will find it. We see obstacles as something to overcome, whereas I believe Czechs see obstacles as reasons to stop. Here's an example. Let's say a client needs some of our products delivered to them by Friday, but my colleagues who work in my factory say it's not possible, we can't do it. A good American business person would not stop at no. She would ask the factory worker, well, why isn't it possible? Tell me your reasons and together we can find a solution. Do you need more money? Do you need more materials? Do you need more trucks? Do you need more workers? I know that there's a way to do it. We just need to figure out how we can all work together and get it done. Now, Czech people, especially government employees, although this is true in America, government employees are the same around the world, but I feel that um, the Czechs will stop at the obstacles which are presented or when someone says no. If they say no and a foreigner says, well, why not? This is somewhat uh, insulting to them. They probably think that Americans are being pushy and always looking for personal exceptions. But Americans are proud of this can-do attitude. As long as we do it respectfully and are never rude to the people we're trying to get to help us, then I feel like this is a good quality. So these are just a few of the differences that I've noticed in the school and work culture of the United States. And they're only within my limited experience. I'm sure that there are many uh, Czech businesses that operate exactly how I'm describing. America, and I know that there are uh, American government offices that are as bad or worse than Czech government offices. So I'm really interested in your experiences. Have you gone to school in one of the other countries or worked in one of the other countries? Do you find my generalizations to be true or is this just my limited experience? Let me know in the comments below. Tak jo, uvidíme se příští týden. Ahoj!